Ooh, shulker box. Let's narrow it down. That's right, gonna be in this chunk. All right, I came from that way, so let's go on this corner. Wait, do we even have a shovel? No. Ooh, I hear villagers. <laughs> We're in. Proving someone used pirate is hard because it looks like the player was hacking. What if I told you that by pressing a combination of keys in Minecraft, you can see ender chests, shulker boxes, pearl stasises, and more using the vanilla launcher? That's right, no mods required, no hacks required, even Falco can do this. You just have to know how to use Pyre. But can this delicious looking pie really uncover bases, pearl stasis rooms, and more? Believe it or not, it can dig up most of your deepest and probably darkest Minecraft secrets. I've rediscovered Pyre in February of 2021, and I've been studying it ever since. And let me tell you, there's so much this pie chart can actually do. It's even been dubbed Vanilla ESP. So today, I'm going to teach you what Pyre is, how to access and navigate Pyre, what shows up on Pyre, how to narrow down the exact chunk, how to protect yourself from Pyre, and what servers can do to help protect you from Pyre. And then I'll share my overall opinion. I'm going to go through all this as quickly as possible. So let's get right into it. Pyre is a tool speedrunners and base hunters use to locate certain entities in a Minecraft world and server. Speedrunners typically use Pyre to look for mob spawners, as a blaze spawner can indicate something useful like a nether fortress. And base hunters use Pyre to find ender chests or shulker boxes or enchanting tables and stuff like that. Basically anything that leads to a base or a stash. Pyre wasn't always used to base hunt or speedrun. It was actually used to help identify what is causing your game to lag. I came across this imager post about Pyre back from 2014, and sure enough, it teaches you how to identify lag in Minecraft using Pyre. The earliest mention of the term Pyre that I can find on YouTube comes from a YouTuber by the name of Kemets in this video where they show off Pyre and how to find a mob spawner. And more recently, YouTuber the Mr. Epic made a video about Pyre starting to really put Pyre in the spotlight. But I think he's a bit confused. Now, if Mr. Epic hit me up and asked me about Pyre like Skidosmi did, he would know so much more. But I had to learn too, and it wasn't until I discovered Boomer Play's intro to Pyre video where it really got me thinking. Everyone is showing how to use Pyre in single player, but there's nothing about multiplayer. And I was able to find bases fairly quickly around Purity Vanilla spawn in spring of 2021. I even learned how to narrow down the exact chunk an entity such as an ender chest or enchanting table was located in. So how did Pyre evolve from being this tool to help identify lag into a powerful vanilla ESP base hunting tool? Well, it really hasn't. Pyre is still a very useful tool to help identify lag, but it's also been packing the feature needed to speedrun or base hunt since Minecraft Java 1.11. All it took was time for someone to navigate to the entities menu of Pyre to find its new meta use. And just like how someone discovered you can use end crystals for PvP, a new base hunting weapon has been unlocked and it's changing the game. Using and navigating Pyre is pretty simple. To open Pyre, all you have to do is press Shift and F3 on your keyboard. But if you have Optifine, you can set it where pressing F3 will display Pyre. All you need to do is go into the game menu, click options, then video settings, other, and enable debug profiler. Now you just need to press F3 to access Pyre. Now that we know how to open Pyre, what are all those numbers and words? When you first open Pyre, at the very top of it, you will see something that says zero root. Under that, you will see a pie chart, and under that, a list of menus we can navigate through with some numbers and percentages and whatever else. The percentages do mean something, but we don't really need to know about that. All we're gonna be looking for is the text above and below the pie graph. So let's start with the text that's below. You can actually use these as a menu and navigate through them using your one through nine on your keyboard with the corresponding number from the left side. 
The menu you're currently in is displayed above the pie graph, but if you ever make a mistake, just press zero and you'll go back to the previous menu. At this time, there's no way to access anything past nine. If you know how to do it, let me know in the comments below. But for finding bases, we are most interested in entity and block entity pie ray. To get there, hit the number that corresponds to tick then level, and now we have two options to pick from, entities and block entities. To see things like ha. villagers, item frames, armor stands, pearls, <laughs> wither skulls, you would choose entities. For everything else, block entities. The entities that display on Pyre vary based on Minecraft version, and on the screen, I will show you what block entities appear on Pyre for every version. For Minecraft Java 1.11 and 1.12, chest, furnace, brewing stand, hopper, piston, only when extended, enchanting table, mob spawner, beacon, ender chest, shulker box, dragon head, end gateway, wither skull, and player head is what displays. And then in Minecraft Java 1.13, conduits and trap chest are added. In Minecraft 1.14, Smoker, Blast Furnace, Campfire, and Bell are added. And in 1.15, Beehive is added. There's no change in 1.16, so it just stays the same. But 1.17 is where Moyang does some drastic changes. Some block entities such as Furnace, Brewing Stand, Hopper, Blast Furnace, Smoker, Beehive, and Player Heads were removed from Pyre. Wither Skulls were just moved to the Entity Pyre. New to the block entities, we have Jukeboxes, but only if there's a music disc inside and all of this continues through 1.18, 1.19, and into today's latest snapshot, 23W04A. Now that you know how to find everything in all versions of Pyre, let's narrow down how to find the exact chunk that it's located in. When Pyre is loaded, it scans for entities based off of render distance. So it helps to understand what Pyre scanning looks like. Here I'm standing on a block and it's gonna represent the chunk that the player is in. And then all around me is some stained glass to represent other chunks and different colors just to represent the render distance. So if your render distance is two, you will only scan the chunks in the green and the light green glass. Render distance of three will also scan yellow, orange for four, and so on. But did you know increasing and decreasing your render distance only helps to a certain point? Yes, you can narrow down to a smaller area, but typically not the exact chunk. But if you pair this with F3G, it's a lot easier to see the chunks to help narrow them down. I'll show you. So we're on uneasyvanilla.com and... I'm going to go ahead and place an e-chest down inside this, inside this hut. Now, my render distance is set to 2. Right, so that means that I should only be able to see it a few chunks. Yep, it already went away. We never count this first chunk that it shows up in. I'll go back to this one, see how it's not here. But then I go back to this one and it is here. And I go one, two, three, bam, it's in here. But what about the other way? It's the same thing. One, two, three, doesn't show up anymore. All right, go back. Don't count the first chunk. One, two, and three this is the chunk that it's in and as you increase your render distance or change it it's just going to increase that value whatever it is so let's make our render distance 10. all right now this is going to change let's go fly out this way i think this is going to go up to like seven or nine or something we'll find out in a sec all right it no longer shows so this next chunk first chunk it's in one two three four five six seven eight nine Yep, it's nine. And then this way, it should be the same thing. All right, now that we've gone south enough, this is the first chunk it shows up in. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Works every time. It doesn't really matter what you have your render distance set to, you'll be able to find it. Just for the hell of it, I'll throw on 64 chunk. We'll refresh Pyrace there to see that there's no e-chest. Place one down, now we got an e-chest. And let's go, 64 uh, chunks, right? Oh, what do you know, it stopped here. First one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's the limit. Basically, whatever the server's render distance is, so in this case, on Uneasy Vanilla, it's eight. That's the max that you should have your render distance set to anyway, because 
it's not going to affect you whether you're on 10 chunks or 64 chunks. It's the same thing. Um, as far as Purity Vanilla goes, I found that um, since their render distance is like four, it's literally just five chunks. So if the e-chest was in that same chunk, you would just count to five on each direction. And because of how Pyre scans on Purity Vanilla, all you need to do is just go to the a corner chunk. The example I showed you guys with the stained glass, this is exactly how Purity renders it. So you would just find a corner chunk for five. So I'll mark that in pink and then you would just count the five on each side and then there you go. You can narrow it down to the exact chunk. So on uneasy, instead of this being like a square going all the way around, it's a circle going all the way around. So it actually looks more like this example with the stained glass and the colors. Just to make this example a little easier, I'm gonna make a waypoint right here. And what we're gonna do is go out seven chunks that way where Pyre no longer show the E chest that's inside this hut. And then we're gonna go either left or right. So I'll show you, it only goes a few chunks. I think it's like four or something before it finally decides to go away. Okay, so uh, each us just went away. This is the first chunk it's in. One, two, three, and four. Should no longer, yep, no longer be in this one. So now if we turn back kind of towards it, it pops back up. It'll be in this chunk, then it goes away again. So now if we keep going away from it, it still won't show up, but if we go into this chunk where it goes closer, it comes back in. So yeah, that's how I know on Uneasy, it's a circle. Basically to make it really easy, you just set your render distance down to two and then you just treat it like it's Pyre on Purity as the squares and you just find the corner chunk and count to three on each side. So that's how you narrow down the chunk on Uneasy Vanilla, but other servers are different. By the way, using Pyre on Purity Vanilla is a bannable offense since the staff has never heard of something called video proof. So the footage I use on Purity Vanilla is- Whoa, wait, I actually didn't use any Purity Vanilla footage. So can't ban me, bitch. Oh, and resolve my ticket. I opened it back in May of 2022. Seeing how easy it is to narrow down exactly where a key entity like an ender chest or shulker box is, it gets you wondering, is your base safe from Pyre? Well, open it up and test it out for yourself. Most of the block entities that show up on Pyre can easily be hidden when not in use. I will show them on screen again, but only from 1.17 to recent releases. See the what shows on Pyre chapter for other versions. But other entities are a risk to your base that you may have to be willing to take. For example, extended pistons show on Pyre. So if you want an automatic farm that uses pistons, Pyre will only show the piston if it activates. Is having a piston activate to display on Pyre for a split second a risk you're willing to take? Another small risk is chests. Chests show up all over the world with mob spawners on Pyre because there's just dungeons all over the place. But you can still narrow down a chunk with chests. It's just a lot harder and more time consuming. If you're really paranoid about this, just use barrels. Only barrel ESP will find you anyway. So yeah, just don't leave stuff that shows up on Pyre out in the open. As far as what server owners can do to protect you from Pyre, they're very limited. They could turn on a feature where it sends packets to the player that says, hey, there's an e-chest here or a shulker box or whatever, just fake block entities but it causes serious lag. Or they can enable a game rule that reduces debug info, which disables cords, but Pyre still works. And what's crazy is there's no way to tell Pyre apart from hacks. So unless you have video proof, it's basically assumed that you're just hacking. As a server owner, you could always just choose to ban it completely like Purity Vanilla, but I guess it just really depends on how much anarchy you really want. So what's my opinion on all this? Honestly, I don't think it should be bannable. I don't think it's cheating only because it is a feature in the game. Pyre has been accessible in the game since Java 1.0 and Mo Yang or Microsoft or whoever keep adding and removing things from what shows up on Pyre and block entities very well knowing that these are things in people's bases on multiplayer servers. So it almost feels like it's intentional. It's literally built into the game. You do not need any mods or anything to use it. You know, I think the big reason why a lot of people think it's cheating is because not many people know about it or how to use it. And hopefully you did learn about it today and how to use it. So now it is fair game. Pyre is 100% preventable. The base owner just has to know what to hide. All Pyre really does 
It just adds a little bit more anarchy to your anarchy server. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you learned something, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you want some more videos like this, and I'll see you all in the next one. This is Testo signing out. Peace.